Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, the Lord is worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he For the Lord is good and his truth endures to all generation. The Lord has promised us that we would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives. God has been good to you. And right now I want you to thank God, give him praise, give him worship for his goodness, for his favor, uh, for his kindness, for his benefits. Thank him for everything that he's done for you. In a world where we focus on all the bad things that are happening, come on, let's thank God for the good things that are happening. You woke up this morning. He started you on your way. You were able to get up and do your thing. You were able to worship with us all day long. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some worship. Give God some praise. Lift up your hands. Open your mouth right where you are. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph because we serve a good and a miraculous and a wonderful God. We give God praise, we give him worship. Uh, we're not trying to be like the nation of Israel when they were going through the wilderness and complaining and fussing and grumbling and forgetting about the goodness of the Lord. God has been good to us. We're getting ready to pray, uh, to thank God and to um, put our requests in by faith believing that God has us. Uh, before we pray, as always, please share, uh, tag somebody, uh, get your elements out as we continue to add layer upon layer of revelation to open up our eyes to uh, not a ritual, but a moment in God's presence as we partake of the meal. Get your elements ready. Uh, we're gonna believe God for the miraculous to happen uh, during this service. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you again that uh, you are the safest place that we can run to in times of trouble. Thank you for being our refuge. Thank you for being our help. Thank you for being our cover. I give you praise today because you have been keeping us. Your hand has been on us. And Father, I thank you that we dwell under that secret place. Thank you that we abide under your shadow. Thank you for being almighty. In a world of evil, thank you that you continue to intervene and begin to do the supernatural. Father, I thank you today for keeping us all day. Thank you for being our strong tower. We run into you and we are safe. Thank you for being our help, for being a refuge in the time of storm. We give you praise today. Others didn't make it, but Lord, we made it and we thank you for it. 
So Father, I pray that you would bless this service. Put your hand on it one more time. We offer it up to you. We give it to you. And we pray, we pray that you would bless it. That Father, that you would give it back to us greater than the way we gave it to you. I thank you, Lord, for each soul that's going to be saved today, every life that's going to be turned around. That Father, as we come to the table of worship, as we partake of the elements, we want to experience your presence and your transforming power. In Jesus' name, amen. Like, do me a favor, hit that share button. Felton's going to come back and sing. And we're right back with the word and with the community celebration. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say
Praise the Lord. Some Brother Felton. Yeah, man. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Haven't heard that three, four day men in a while. Oh, yeah, man. It still works. Yeah. <laughs> they all work. Yes, sir. All righty. Well. Hey, welcome, everybody. Get my notebook out. I knew you were going to say something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're gonna say something. Yeah, well, let's see what happens today. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Pray that our Bible minds will really kick in today um, as we continue to talk about communion. Uh, Y'all continue to share. We hope you've been enjoying all the lessons and, of course, uh, the service from this morning. Uh, if you missed any of the communion services from the past couple of months, go back and watch them. And we're believing God that. As we continue to add layer upon layer of knowledge, um, it's going to change the way we see this meal and we approach it by faith. Sure. All right. Um, so a few things. Anything you want to? Nope. Sure. Okay. Let's go. A few things we want to jump in. Just kind of quick review. We were talking about for a long time, shaping our thought process to understand that God's presence is in the meal. Right. He says, this is my body. Mm -hmm. uh, Last month, we talked about Luke chapter 24, where Jesus was walking down the road of Emmaus, and uh, the preaching didn't really open their eyes. It was no. when they sat down to eat with him, eyes Boom. were open. Yeah. <laughs> said, did not our hearts burn the whole time he was talking, but the meal just opened up their yeah. eyes. The revelation came. The revelation of God's presence. Um, so how we approach the meal dictates how we experience it. How we approach it dictates how mm -hmm. we experience it. Um, it goes back to the woman with the issue of blood. Yep. One touched them, other people were coming in contact with them. Two different touches. Yeah. And I think for a long time when we see communion as a ritual, we come in contact, but there's no real touch. Right. Uh, no virtue comes out because we approach it the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we've been trying to get everybody to be like that woman to understand when I come to touch him, something's supposed to happen. I think the a lot of times we may understand the significance of it, mm -hmm. but perhaps we have not been taught to recognize the power in it. Yeah. Because I think we established a couple of weeks ago that um, it's possible mm -hmm. that we've been leaving breakthroughs, miracles yep. in the atmosphere because we have not fully appreciated the power you know, one of the things about uh, the uh, feasts, the festivals of God, mm -hmm. is that it was a break from the normal routine. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what the festivals were all about. Mm -hmm. God inviting them, because they didn't invite themselves. Yeah. He invited you to a gathering mm -hmm. that broke your routine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So every time we come to the table, he's inviting us to a gathering that's going to break our routine. Absolutely. If that ain't the miraculous written all over it, yeah, man. it's a celebration yeah. and a break from something. Which is wow. why it needs to have a distinct place. Yeah. God did not add his festivals and feasts to another service. Mm -hmm. He made them distinct. Mm -hmm. um, that showed the specialness of it to him. Mm -hmm. And if you decided not to invite yourself or to respond to the invitation, yeah. Things went on as normal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there were a whole lot of blessings attached to uh, that we attached to first food yeah. that are actually attached to the feasts. Right, right. You know, the angelic presence, one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe because of maybe some ignorance, mm -hmm. we've not uh, we've observed yeah. yep. the ritual, mm -hmm. but not experienced the power. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I think. Um, when you talk about observing a ritual, something we're gonna really jump into is what does the Bible mean when he says, remember? Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Okay. And 1 Corinthians 11, and this will help us to understand uh, what he means by remembering. 1 Corinthians 11, we're gonna look at verse 24. Okay. Uh, and he says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. Now, this word remembrance comes from the Greek word amnesis, I believe is how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. And it means to recall a thing 
or to recollect the thing, it's a recollection that creates an experience. So you're recalling in its entirety, not yes. just one phase. Not one phase, yeah. Okay. I'm recalling all of it. Remember all of me. Yes, all of me, so okay. I can have an experience with what I remember. Yeah. So it's not just I thought about it. It's a thought that leads to an experience. This works in the negative also. Because if you think about something that happened to you traumatically, yeah. the feelings of that moment can come back to you. Mm -hmm. And it's been 20 years since the moment. It's not just a thought, it's a recollection yeah. that produces an experience. Refreshing the negative. There you go. Yeah. And if we can do it in the negative, spiritually we can do it in the positive. Yeah. It's a time of refreshing. Yes. Okay. So when Jesus says, remember me, He's saying, recollect me, have a refreshing, watch this, where you experience his death and the benefits of his death okay. when you remember him, when mm -hmm. you recollect him. Mm -hmm. So when you take it, when you're remembering him, it's supposed to produce a, an experience. Your mind goes back to Calvary and you experience a death, the benefits and the transformation of what he did at the cross. Is there a subtlety in the, in the verse that we missed? Mm. Not only does he say, this is my body, mm. which is broken for you, mm -hmm. this do in remembrance of mm -hmm. me. So is he implying that the efficiency or the efficacy of the breaking is still going on? Yes. And he's talking about remembering him in the present. Mm -hmm in the entirety of what you know about him in the past. Because mm -hmm. my body is still, the broken body is still working. Yes. Do this and okay. Yes. Okay. Because you just jump right into the next part. No, okay. this is so, I love how this, okay. this clicks like this because okay. the remembrance act is past, right. present, mm -hmm. and it's future. Absolutely. It's all three at the same time. Yeah. So when I remember him in his past, I remember his walk. Mm -hmm. And the things he did on his walk can happen in my life because I'm recollecting it so I can experience it. So when I read the Bible, oh, here it is. Yeah. And I read the scriptures and I read about him doing a miracle for Bartimaeus right. or the leper. I remember it. I'm remembering that yes, and I can have the same remember it. experience. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, uh, we remember that he instituted it. Mm -hmm. We're not remembering the power of Jesus, mm -hmm. which he's making available to us at this meal, a revelation yeah. of Christ mm -hmm. that we may have forgotten. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so remember past and we also remember it present. Good. That would require <clears throat> part of the sermonic treatment reminding the people who Jesus is. Yes. And what he was capable of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if we're taking this, his body was broken. What are the benefits of his broken body? Mm -hmm. What are the benefits of his blood? Mm -hmm. Those benefits you're supposed to receive, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, all those things. Sacrifice. Sacrifice mm -hmm. when you partake of this. Mm -hmm. All right, so it is past. We remember his walk. I, the only example I can give if anybody's ever seen the movie, the movie, The Never Ending Story, okay. as the boy is reading the story, he's experiencing the story mm -hmm. in real time as he's reading. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it took him into the story. Mm -hmm. And as we read the Bible the same way, we go into the story so we can have the experiences of those stories also. Okay. So he says, remember past. We also remember present. And like you just said in verse 25, we're going to go there. Mm -hmm. It says, after this manner, also we took the cup, um, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Present verse. Yep. As you presently do it, do it remembering me, yeah. understanding that the body's broken in the past is still benefiting you right now. I'm experiencing his present presence, if I can say it like that. Could it, it is my memory of what I've learned about him. Mm-hmm what I know about him that produces the heart of worship, the heart of praise, yep. uh, the, the faith when I pray. Mm -hmm. It's what I remember about him yep. that causes me to pray by faith. Absolutely. And believe that what he said he'll do, he'll do. Yep. And, and, and when you take that believing, like he said, he'll do those things for us. Now, here's the cool thing, y'all. <coughs> 
Jesus gives us the elements. Right. And then what he wants us to do <laughs> is create a transaction. Give the elements back to him. My, my. And he gives them back to us. Let's go to Matthew 14. Matthew 14. And let's look at verse number uh, 19. Okay. Matthew 14, 19. And we went over this, I think, the last time or the time before. Buddy, buddy, buddy. And watch this. And he come, this is the feeding the 5,000. They took the boy's lunch, gave it to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. It was a lunch in the boy's hands. Right. But once they gave it to Jesus in verse 19, and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed it, break it, gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. So in the boy's hand, it was lunch. When they gave the elements to Jesus and he lifted it up, he gave it back to them greater than the way that they gave it. So when we take the elements and we lift them up to God, we're giving those things to him and he comes into the elements and we receive them greater than the way that we gave him. We lift them up as a cracker and juice and we receive them as his presence. If I could say it like that. Is there another gospel that says he gave him the fish back? I, that's the thing I've always wondered about that. You never... He kept the fish. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, that was the redemptive portion. Mm -hmm. He gave the loaves to them to multiply in their hands. But he kept a part of the thing for himself. So. <laughs> Because it usually really only the, talks about the bread. The bread, bread multiplies. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So he kept it, he had to, he's a priest. Mm -hmm. He had to keep the redemptive portion mm -hmm. of the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. Right. <laughs> this is gonna be beautiful. <laughs> we treading on some deep waters, y'all. Y'all stay yeah, with us. So, so. <laughs> That's, I've always wondered about those, the fish because it never really mentions the fish. It mentions the loaves a lot. The bread multiplied in their hands. Mm -hmm. He kept the fish and gave out the bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was impossible for him to give it all back to them. Mm -hmm. that, would, that would have meant that his character would have changed. Mm -hmm. The reason God could not accept Cain's offering was because God could not change mm -hmm. who he was. Mm -hmm. So there was no way, he might have wanted to take Cain's offering, yeah. but he couldn't. He couldn't do it. Because it didn't have blood in it. Mm -hmm. And it was the firstling of the flock. Mm -hmm. I believe Cain chose out of the flock. Mm -hmm. So here comes the lunch. Mm -hmm. Hands the whole thing to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus gives them back the loaf mm -hmm. and keeps the, the fish. Because <laughs> the redemptive portion had to be kept, kept by him. him. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's going to be interesting. That's why the rest of it could be broken could be and broken multiplied. multiplied. Oh, yes, sir. God. <laughs> okay. No, you could. So, so that's why we lift up the elements. Yeah. Because we're giving it back to him so he can come into it. Because what you give him, he gives it back to you greater than the way yeah. you gave it. Yeah. Lunch turned into a buffet. Mm. A cracker turns into presents. The drink turns into his blood. Because we present it to him and ask him to come in it. So when we receive it, we receive it greater than the way we gave it. I went to a powerful service, another denomination, mm. and they served communion. And the priest partook of it before he gave it to the people. Yep. That's biblical. It is. Okay. Yeah. And, that did, and, I, and you're right, a lot of Orthodox and some Catholic mothers, mm -hmm. the priest takes it first. Absolutely. Blesses it because Jesus took it, blessed, you know. It, it, <laughs> it's right here. Yeah, it's, it, different doesn't always mean wrong, y'all. So, That's right. So, um, so we, 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 when we partake of the meal, we are bringing his past into our present, mm -hmm. and we understand that he's present with us mm -hmm. when we take it. Mm -hmm. It also is prophetic. There's a prophetic quality to eating the meal. 
Absolutely. So let's establish the prophetic quality to okay. it. Let's go to Luke 22. Luke 22. And look, look at verse number 14. Luke twenty two fourteen, 14. And it says, when the hour was come, he sat down in the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof yeah. until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Okay. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So Jesus is saying that when you take this meal, mm -hmm. you're taking this meal in the meantime until the great feast of the lamb in Revelation. Okay. Because soon we're going to all eat together. Mm -hmm. So let's go to first, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians 11. And uh, let's look at verse 26. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, 26. And he Got says, it. Got it. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show or proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Yes, sir. So when we eat of this meal, where it's actually giving us hope that Jesus will return. Because he said he would. He said he would. And that we'll eat with him in the kingdom when all things have been restored on the earth. So communion is prophetic that not only is he blessing me today, but he's giving me hope that I'm going to be with him for all eternity later. Because I'm proclaiming that he's coming back again. But he's also saying, Pastor Nick, that he shows up at the meal. Mm -hmm. We're back to his presence. Yeah, his, his presence is in this yeah. until you eat with him in all eternity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's prophetic in its nature. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 14 and we're almost done. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. And let's look at verse 11. Exodus 14, 11. I mean, sorry, Exodus chapter uh, 12. I wrote it down wrong. Exodus chapter 12. You know what, let's start up a little higher. Let's look at verse number, let's start at verse number uh, four, for three, for some context. Exodus 12, three. Because you notice when Jesus took his last supper with them, it was during a Passover time, yeah. transitioning it over. Yeah. So verse, Exodus 12, three says, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. A lamb for a house. Yes, sir. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him take of his neighbor next unto his house, uh, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Mm -hmm. And when you kill it, the same blood of that, blem that, that lamb with no blemish shall take the blood, Strike it on the two, the two side posts, the sides mm -hmm. of the house, mm -hmm. and the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. Eat not of it raw nor sodden, with all the water, but um, with roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with all the pertness thereof. And yet and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Mm, burn off. And that which remaineth of it until the morning shall burn with fire, mm -hmm. all of it. And here's a prophetic part, verse 11. And thus ye shall eat it with your loins girded, yeah. shoes on your feet, yeah. staff in your hand. Yeah. And you're going to eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Moses says, y'all get dressed, yep. get your staff in your hand, and eat like you're leaving. That's right. You haven't left yet, but I need you to eat it like deliverance is coming. Mm -hmm. And when we come to approach the meal, I'm not sure we ate this thing like we're coming out of something. No, no, of course not. Of course not. No, getting out of service, not being delivered from something. Come on now. That's, that's and they sang true. a song and went out? Yep. Okay, get, being released from the service. Being released from the service. Yeah. Being able to say to yourself, I went to communion. Mm-hmm. When the reality is this meal is supposed to lead to deliverance. 
Your faith has to be ready to say, I'm coming out of some stuff after this service is over. This is not about a ritual, it's about a relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Because it's prophetic in its nature. Mm -hmm. When I eat this, I gotta eat it with my lawns girded, my staff in my hand, by faith ready that God's gonna deliver me for some stuff mm -hmm. after I eat this meal. Yeah. So when you eat it, look at it prophetically. Yep. God's gonna do something. And last scripture, let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12. And let's look at verse number eight. Let's start there. Genesis 12. Um, you know, um, well, you know, I made the wrong thing. Genesis 14, sorry. Okay. I was too busy typing this thing. Um, yeah, Genesis had, 14, had me wondering. verse 18. Okay. Genesis 14, 18. Sorry, okay. y'all. Okay. Had a child in my hand while I was typing at the same time. <laughs> this homeschooling thing, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> so, so watch this. He says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, yeah. brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the most high God. Melchizedek is a type of Christ. Because mm -hmm. we don't bring the meal. Jesus says, I am the bread, I am the blood, mm -hmm. I bring the meal. Yep. And he says, the priest of the most high God, and he blessed him, talking about Abraham, Abram at the time, it said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And watch this, he gave him tithes of all. Yes. So Melchizedek brings communion mm -hmm. to Abraham. Right. And Abraham responds, responds with a tithe. by with a tithe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So last month we brought in the word in communion bringing revelation. Right. But communion and giving leads to a revelation Ab also. Absolutely. Oh, boy. Absolutely. That's why when we sow at communion, we got to expect some revelation to come to Absolutely. Him. Oh, boy. Because we usually go jump to chapter 15, but chapter 14 is important. So he says in verse 21, And the king of Sodom said to Abram, uh, Give me thy per the, the persons and take the goods to thyself. Mm -hmm. And Abram, Abram said to the king of Sodom, I've lift up mine eyes, my hand to the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread, even to a shoe latchet, and that I will take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I've made Abram rich. Yeah. Wow. Save only that which is the young men have eaten in the portion of the men which went with me, Anar, Esco, and Mamre, let them take their portion. And after these things. That's when the word came. After they had communion, after Abraham tithed, after Abraham did the right thing by somebody, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. Yes, sir. Saying, fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Mm, mm, mm. The revelation came after they had a meal and after there was giving. That's right. Absolutely. Which means we got to participate in the whole entire process. process. Oh, boy. To receive what's buried in the process for us. My, my, my. <laughs> you said something on Wednesday that when we kind of reference this, that Abraham's taking the communion and giving the tithe opened God's heart concerning That's him. That's right. He did open his heart. And then God started talking to him. And it wasn't small talk. Mm -hmm. It was covenant talk. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to blow your mind with this next one. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And what you're dealing with right now looks nothing like what I promised to do. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you, you're right. If you read all chapter 15, Abraham's like, how are you going to do this? You know, I got Eleazar. And God's like, nah, bro, I'm going to do this through your own loin. This opened the door to a miraculous thing in Abram's life. Yeah, man. Isn't it amazing, though, how frequently we see God speaking to an individual, opening his mind, mm -hmm. revealing their future, and how almost to a man there's some conversation about not being qualified. Yep. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder. I don't wonder. God purposely chooses what man would call the foolish thing. Yep. 
It's an amazing revelation. Mm -hmm. It just makes me wonder how many times has God wanted to say something and we completely missed it because we weren't following process. Just how many times <laughs> have we come to communion mm -hmm. and only left with part of the revelation? Mm -hmm. I believe it's in Hebrews where they talk about, uh, I'm paraphrasing, there's a rest God wants to give us. Yeah. But we leave part of it unaccessed. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. So God wants to move and he's waiting for his people to come together around the table yep. so he can manifest, mm -hmm. watch this, everything we remember about him. Yep. So what we really want Jesus to do when we have communion is to do what he's famous for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I want to remember, I want to experience what he's famous for. That's right. If he did it in the Bible, I, I don't care what nobody yeah. says, the same miracle working God in oh, scripture yeah. is working oh, yeah. right now. Oh yeah. Although there are plenty of very popular conservatives that say, mm -hmm. you know, the only hope you have is going to heaven. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a hopeless life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so we're getting ready to take the elements. Um, before we do this, we usually sow into this moment. Absolutely. And you read the Bible right there, Abraham tithe. Melchizedek brought the meal and he responded with uh, tithing. He got something, uh, 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 spoils before the battle. Mm -hmm. And before the battle, uh, before the communion, he got a big spoil from this big fight to get Lot back. And Melchizedek comes and Abraham recognizes something. I need to give a portion to God of what he has given yeah. to me. And the tithe, and we've talked about it before, that we give a tithe, and sometimes we give an additional tithe just because. Look, sometimes I need a window opened off schedule. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll give him what he asked me for mm -hmm. or commands me to do. Mm -hmm. I'll, give it, I'll give it in, in addition to. Yeah. Uh, we call it first fruit. Okay. Yeah, but it's when I need a window open, I know how to open it. Yeah. But most saints don't think that way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I'm sure you're going to start teaching on that soon, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. So what we want you to do, if you didn't tithe today, give it tonight. Yeah. Um, some people want to do additional one. You are more than open to do an additional yeah. one. Yeah. Um, if you can't do all that, do the best you can tonight as we give during this communion celebration. Because I don't know about you, I want God to come and open my eyes to some stuff. Yeah. This word to show up and he say, I'm your shield and your exceeding great reward. He opens his heart. Then he opens our eyes. Yeah. Then he opens our situation. Then he opens the windows. Mm -hmm. Opens the doors. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing key God is revealing to us. I'm 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 excited about what we're learning, but I'm really excited about the anticipation of when we've gathered together yeah. and those first few communions. I'm looking for God to do absolutely something just incredibly supernatural. Absolutely. But he can begin to do it right now. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is follow the process. Get the revelation, bring the tithe and off, bang. And God begins to speak to you about you yep. and what he wants to do for you. Mm -hmm. And he says, fear not. Yep. I'm yeah. your shield. I am yep. thy exceeding great, great reward. reward. Yep. The words are so plain. The things are the blessings. Mm -hmm. The reward is God himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the information is on the screen. You can uh, participate in that and you can give. Um, we're getting ready to take communion. And another word, that am, an, am the Misa word, mm. and the Mises word, also not even talks about us remembering, but you were talking about it and it clicked. And remember, that, I believe there's a scripture in Hebrews, I think it's chapter nine, where it talks about even God remembering too. Oh, yeah. So not only are we remembering, he's remembering us. We used to sing that song. Yeah, he will remember me. He will remember me. Yes, sir. When yes, on the cross of Calvary. Yes, sir. The Lord was crucified. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Yeah. He man. will remember me because as we take communion, there's that remembrance that kicks Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And God says, boom, I didn't forget about you. No. I just want you to remember me. Wow. In a, and God remembers in an active sense. So get your elements out and um, we're going to get ready to... Uh, Break it and bless it. Thank you, sir. Break it, bless it, multiply it. And present it to God that 
we give it back to him that he is the bread his blood is the cup and we're going to believe and thank god today that the holy spirit would fill this atmosphere and fill right where you are and god's presence will begin to take over and as we eat of this we're going to take in his presence and the bible says they took the bread they blessed it and ate it same thing with the cup that washes us clean and drank of it and begin to worship the lord right where you are man i feel it praise him right where you are yeah. i feel this thing worship him right where you are remember god because he's remembering you come on felt come with some worship man every praise is to our god every word of worship with one accord every praise every praise is to our god Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior. God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is, God my savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is. Every praise is to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to 